Hello fellow introverts and welcome back to the channel. Motorcycle madman Jesse James has unofficially broken the land speed record for the hydrogen powered vehicle that packs modern technology into a vintage racer more than 40 years old. Yes, the same guy behind West Coast Choppers blazed across El Mirage Dry Lake bed at 199.7 miles per hour in a car he claims he spent a couple of million bucks building. Now, this is exciting for two reasons. One, we've been looking into alternate fuel sources, hydrogen being viable uh, compared to electric, more sustainable in my opinion, but what do I know? I'm just a guy on the internet, so basically I'm a professional on the subject. This proves that the engines are capable. So. I remember Jesse James from Monster Garage and stuff like that, dating myself, but you know, you know. Now, he'd been toying with the idea of an alternate fuel racer, but rather than start from scratch, as BMW did with the slick H2R racer that previously held the record, he modified a 60s era streamliner to run on gaseous hydrogen. Quote, I think it's way cooler to take an old hunk of shit that many considered useless and make it haul ass, Jesse James said. It has a built-in soul and history, plus it's recycling. That hunk of shit is a somewhat historic machine called D's Milladon Engineering, Davis B Streamliner, and it is no stranger here to the salt. This car once hit 237 miles per hour at the Bonneville Salt Flats using a Chrysler engine. And James says it set the record for a front wheel drive vehicle. It hadn't seen action for a while. And when James first saw the car, it was hanging in a friend's shop. Quote, I always loved the way it looked, Jesse James said, kind of like an evil flying saucer. After getting some design help from renowned land speed racer Mike Cook, the crew at West Coast Chopper lengthened the car 24 inches and brought the frame and suspension up to modern safety specs. James handled all the bodywork himself, as you would expect then called upon engine expert Kurt Urban to help develop the power plant. They went a bit nuts, building a 572 cubic inch twin turbo Chevy engine that produces prodigious power. BMW set the record with liquid hydrogen, which is way easier to make a motor run on. It will never be as practical for an everyday car. The engine produces 780 horsepower, roughly, and about 900 foot-pounds of torque. Now that's some serious power from the world's most plentiful resource, being water. A Liberty air shifted five speed transmission and a winner's quick change differential round out the drivetrain. The hydrogen is stored at 5,000 PSI in three tanks built by Quantum Technologies. The same outfit developing the plug-in electric drivetrain for the Fisker automotive. You don't know what Fiskers are? You should look them up. It sounds like an iron lung when it's working, Jesse James said. James fired up the engine for the first time at 12.45 a.m. on June 8th. He says sounds like a real race car, just done in a non-ozone killing way. By that point, the only thing was left to do was suit up, get in, and hold on. James made his record-setting run on Tuesday and taped it for his TV show Jesse James is a Dead Man. He fell short of his goal of 200 miles an hour, but it was enough to top the 186.52 miles per hour recorded by BMW. The speed was confirmed by the Southern California Timing Association and sanctioned body for land speed racing. So why did a guy known for building customized motorcycles decide to go for alternate race fuel? I feel like that's wrong. <laughs> He's not known just for building motorcycles. I mean, West Coast Choppers is his brand, but like you follow him on social media like I do, he can build anything he wants to. So I don't think it's fair to say that he just builds motorcycles. Quote. I'm not so blinded by the things that I build that I can't see change is needed, he said. I'm in love with anything with wheels and a big engine. You and me both, fella. I hope my son will be able to love the same things. They'll just be running on a different kind of gas. Now, the episode featuring James's record run will air August 9th. Now, we have a couple updates here. Updated on the 19th, Roy Creel, president of Southern California Timing Association, sent this note to correct a point of the origin of the post. The SCTA was neither involved in nor did we confirm Mr. James' quote-unquote record. In fact, Mr. James did not set any record. What he did accomplish was to exceed the existing record speed previously set by BMW. His private 
Timing event was timed by the same folks that time SCTA events and the course was set up by the same folks who set SCTA courses. So basically, y'all are just a bunch of haters. Another update, add Lane Speed, Louise, and Noeth to the list of people saying James did not set a record. She's a racer and a journalist who's been covering land speed racing for the past decade. And she's beyond peeved by all the attention James is getting. Of course, like I said, another hater. She sent us an email calling him a liar and a cheat when it comes to claiming world records. She says his claim is without merit since the activities were conducted without the benefit of any motorsports sanctioning authority. Mr. James' efforts count for absolutely nothing on the world of motorsports stage and they amount to little more than a self-promotion TV racer's PR stunt since he chose to ignore the sports sanctioning rules that have applied to all records certified in the past 80 years. Honestly, I don't think Jesse James gives a fuck one way or another. Now, why is this cool? I'll tell you. Hydrogen. A hydrogen engine can work in two ways. There's a fuel cell and then there's the internal combustion, which is what he was talking about. So Jesse James was an internal combustion engine where he repurposed a 572 uh, Chevy big block and the BMW was more of a fuel cell design. Now, the fuel cell, it converts hydrogen gas into electricity that powers an electric motor. Kind of like air gas for gasoline engines. This type of engine is called the hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle, or FCEV. It works by compressing hydrogen and feeding it into a fuel cell stack, which contains membrane electrodes that use hydrogen and oxygen to create electricity through an electrochemical reaction. Now, the electricity powers an electric motor, which drives the wheels and any excess energy can be stored in a battery. The reaction also produces water and heat as a byproduct, as most chemical reactions do, which again, they are expelled harmless because it is water and water vapor, essentially. Now, they claim the SCEVs have several advantages over conventional internal combustion engines, including reducing greenhouse gas emissions. However, hydrogen fuel cars can be expensive to produce and store because hydrogen gas is usually obtained through electrolysis, which requires a lot of energy. So again, not perfect, but viable. Now, the other combustion engine, the internal combustion engine, it burns hydrogen as a fuel, similar to traditional internal combustion engines. This type of engine can be appealing to a vehicle manufacturer because hydrogen is a zero carbon fuel and the engines are reliable and durable. For example, Toyota has developed a hydrogen combustion engine that operates similarly to a gasoline engine with direct injection for a hydrogen fuel and spark ignition. However, some say that it can be difficult to get a hydrogen engine to run solely on hydrogen and that hardware issues remain. Again, not perfect, but it is exciting that something like this has gone into the mainstream and with the platform that Jesse James has uh, bring light to the alternate fuels. I honestly don't care what my race car runs on as long as it runs and it's fast as shit. That's it. That's all I care about. But again, you let me know what you guys think. And with that very high revving loud conclusion, I will talk to you nerds later.